Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today we're going to be talking about this tank again. Uh, as you know, I've been quite proud of my uh, defeating of the Blackbeard Algae Plague that we had going on in here. This is my large discus display tank. Um, it was riddled with Blackbeard Algae, but we managed to get rid of that, thanks. Not in any small part to the help of these flying silver foxes here. Um, they've done a, a stellar job on there. I'm also really happy with how this tank is looking in general now because it's, it's kind of getting the shape that I wanted. Uh, I don't know if you remember me talking about this in previous videos. I wanted to have this kind of main central island here and just have that kind of shape with a peak just off centre and then dropping back down again. I think we've just about achieved that now. So what I'm really keen to do is to make sure we don't lose the momentum and make sure that I keep on top of everything in terms of fertilisation and water changes and all those good things and that keep the plants as healthy and as green and as bright as they can be. Um, I have noticed that some of the plants are starting to have a little bit of brown, some specks of algae showing up, um, some little bit of frayed raggedy leaves here and I think it's mainly because I'm just not keeping on top of the consistency with the uh, fertilisation. So I have in the main part used a couple of different fertilisers here. Mainly started off going with these two, these are TNC Complete and the light version. I have been using them for a while. Really happy with the results of these to be honest. Um, it's just a liquid fertiliser. One of them just has uh, no extra nitrogen in it basically. And then recently, as you would have seen in one of my videos, I was given some of these um, macro elements um, from JBL. So I've been trying these out as well just to give a bit of extra colour so the iron especially was something that I noticed in my test kit that I was deficient in. So I've been dosing the iron a little bit more. Um, so what I really want to do is to concentrate on the iron one and use the TNC light one because I think that covers all the other bases quite well. And this is where I've fallen down in the past is consistency. It's just I've not been able to make sure that I'm doing it as often as I need to do it because this is a discus tank as well. I'm obviously changing loads of water. Not obviously, you might not know that. But as it's a discus tank, I like to do large water changes on this. So when the fertilizer, for instance, calls for so many milliliters per week, depends when I add that. And if I miss it on a day, I'm then taking it out when I do a large water change on a different day. So what I want to do is change that so as I can add, rather than adding, I don't know, 50 milliliters a week, add five milliliters a day. No, that doesn't make sense mathematically, but you know what I mean. So to that end, I have dug this out of the cupboard. I was going to say I bought this, but I didn't. I bought this about a year ago, maybe, maybe even longer than that. It's a dozing pump. It's generally found in the saltwater side of the hobby, where you're using it to dose your calcium and all your other various bits and bobs, but why not use it for fertilizers? I actually bought it um, to test it as a substitute against uh, an auto top off thing. So auto top offs when you run a sump, Obviously the water level stays high here, but in the sump it starts to drop and then if you don't top it up, you get the <laughs> horrible noise from your pump as it runs dry. So you buy an auto top off, but it seemed horrendously expensive for all the ones that I looked at. Whereas this, I think was about 40 pounds. Um, but anyway, I, I digress, we're getting off topic here. So what I want to do is set this up for use with fertilizers. So I'm gonna use these two, the iron one from JBL, which is a fantastic product. I can already see it starting to deepen the colors in the, the red plants. And the TNC Aquarium Plant Nutrient, TNC Light, that is. So we're gonna use it with that. And what it is, it's essentially a pump. State the obvious, why don't you? It has a little computer, for want of a better term, in there. This one's a two-stage pump. And then you get to set a program for each of these pump heads. So in here you have one is, you attach some air line or something like that to it. It sucks in and then spits out a precise dosage. Um, so this one's a two-stage one. You get them up three, four, five, six. This one as well on the back. It has, so that's your power button, but it's also got a little... I think it's a slave connector. It doesn't actually say anything in the instructions about what this is, but I think that's if you wanted to connect up a second one, you could program them all together. So what we need to do is get this hooked up, set it down there in the sump, get some airline cut to length. So you have one into the bottle itself, and then the other one goes into the tank. And 
what I want to do is set the program so that it's putting in a little bit every day rather than a lot every week. So before we do that, I won a competition on a Facebook group the other day where a company called Proquatics sent me some of their fish food. Uh, and this one is like the Sarah Onip tabs basically. So this is a, it's called the Sticky Brown, this one. I'll put some links in the description to this one, but essentially you just put it on there and it sticks to the side of the aquarium. And it works quite well, this one, I've noticed so far. Uh, I've tried them before with uh, another brand. I can't remember what the name of that one was, but they would only stick for like 30 seconds to a minute and then the fish would just knock them all off. But these ones seem to stick quite well and disintegrate quite slowly. And the idea is that you get them there and the fish come up and all feed on them, but I've now just scared them into, their, into the corner because I made a big crashing noise on the top. Uh, but the fish come along and feed and you can inspect them and see what's going on. I thought that's a really good idea. Um, they seem to work really well too. Obviously they're not going to do it now for the camera, but I shall film them later on where I don't make a big crashing noise on the top. Um, but it leads me on to part two of the giveaway. So as we approach 10,000 subscribers on the channel, I want to do a bit of a giveaway to give something back. If you've seen the videos before, you'll know all about this. Basically, I've got a big cardboard box full of, at the moment, it's got some JBL goodies in there. We've got some aquascaping tools, we've got aquascaping gloves, some plant stuff, some hose clips, all manner of things. Go check out the old video if you want to see more. But to add to it this week, we've got the second thing that I won here, which is the Proquatics. Uh, tropical granules, so I've got a big pouch of them, that'll go in there. And the next one's a donation from Aquadiction. They've given me a £10 Amazon voucher, so that's going in there as well. So Aquadiction, they very kindly sponsored this part of the giveaway. They run a website which is full of information about all kinds of tropical fish, it's care guides, species profiles, all that kind of thing. I'll put all the links in the description to these guys, you can go and check them out. They're adding to the website constantly, so you, I think they're even accepting submissions if people want to get involved with that kind of thing. So now it's starting to build up something quite good, but there's still more to come. So make sure you keep an eye on the channel and keep subscribed. So if you want a chance to win in the competition, all you have to do is follow me on any of my social media profiles. So that's Facebook, Instagram or YouTube, obviously. Click the subscribe button. Uh, comment on the video or the post with the hashtag AA10K and you'll get a chance to win. Comment as many times as you want, just once per post, not a hundred times. Also, just to clarify some of the rules or some of the people, the comments on the videos that I posted three years ago aren't going to count because I have to go through and compile all those comments. So only from when I released the last video forwards. Uh, comments on old posts don't count. Only one comment per post. Comment on as many posts from now until the point that I get to 10k as you want and you get your in for multiple chances to win. Anyway, back to the content of the video. Now, everyone's probably gone now, so I don't know who I'm talking to anymore. Let me know in the comments if you're still watching. Um, we get in the box, the j you get the controller unit itself, which like I say, has two of the pump heads. It also comes with a spare pump head. You get that. And a power supply, obviously. So again, like everything I buy in the aquarium world, it's a dodgy foreign one. Um, but it comes with an adapter as well, which is quite good. Like I say, I think this was about £40 and I bought this over a year ago now. So you shouldn't have this problem yourself, but there are older versions of this which don't allow you to do uh, specific amounts. So you only get to set them for, I don't know, I can't remember what it is. It's either one mil and that's it. So if you want to dose five mils of something, you have to set it to come on five times. But this one you can dose between, I think it's between zero and a hundred mils per dose. Um, so it's the V2 of the GA Abel ones. They all look exactly the same and there's no markings on it anywhere. Um, he says quickly checking. Yep, there's nothing on that to say that is the version two. The only way you'll know is once you get down to programming it and see whether or not you have the option to add uh, any variation between the dose amounts. So we'll get this plugged in. It's going to live under the sump and we'll get it all hooked up. I'm actually going to not dose it for the first few days, just to make sure that it is reliable. Um, I'm just going to set the output from each of them into a glass or a cup or something like that, just to make sure that it's not getting stuck on or missing anything. And then once I'm confident with it, we'll let it run for good. So I'll get it hooked up and we can take a look at it. So there we've got it situated above the sump. 
And the first thing I've noticed, I don't know if you can see that, if you can read that, it's clearly magic because it's got today's date. Time's wrong, but the date's right. So it's been in the box for the best part of 18 months, but it knows what today's date is. Has it done that? Right, so on the pump head itself, we've got obviously two and in and out. Uh, as I look at it, the left hand side is the intake and the right hand side is the output. And what we have to do is go in and select each pump head individually and pre-prime them by just clicking the left button and we go into the manual mode of pumps and hitting the enter button which runs that head and it's giving me the option to do up to eight pumps obviously you can connect more of these together with slaves uh, and what you want to do is get to the point where it's putting out water so I'm just running it into this at the minute so once it is primed we need to then calibrate uh, and to calibrate, what we want to do is we prime it and then run 100 millilitres into a measuring cylinder and make sure that that's right. And then we save that calibration. So to do that, from the main menu, we press the up arrow, select the pump, select how much we want to put in, so 100 millilitres. Yes, up arrow again. And then we press the up arrow again once your measuring cylinder has got up to 100 millilitres. And then that essentially saves it and calibrates the value. So I'll do this for both pumps and then we'll come back and set it up with the fertilisers. Next we have to do some maths. Um, so you have to work out how much of the fertiliser you want to add. So according to this on the TNT light it's 1 mil per 10 litres of tank water per week. So we'll start with the recommended dosage and then we can fine tune it as the weeks go by. So this is 700 litres, this system. And so if one mil per 10 litres, that would be seven mil per 100 litres, so 70 mil per week, um, which is 10 mil a day. So that's quite easy. So what we want to do is you get a choice of how many doses you do in a day. So you can do it up to 24 um, doses in a day, but I'll stick with two just so as we're not overloading the system at any one time. So if I want 10 mil a day, that's two doses of five mil. So I'm going to set it for two doses a day in each dose for five milliliters. So to do that, we go back into the menu. So let's get from that back into the menu and um, check me out reading the manual and everything. Um, I'm actually surprised how easy this is. This is quite straightforward. I could probably do it without the manual, but you know, we'll give it a bash as it's meant to be. Um, so press the button for that. To enter the setting menu. Press up and down until you get to select set program. So I'll set program, select pump. So we'll select pump number one. And we want two per day. And then the next one is for intervals. So how many days? So you can choose zero to 30 days as an interval time. Zero means none. One means every day, two every second day. So we're going to do it every day. So setting it at one. Dosing volume. So we want five milliliters. Dosing time. So you can just get to pick a random time basically. So I think we'll set one for I don't know, 6 a.m., 6 p.m., something like that. And number two, five milliliters. Enter, time, 6 p.m. So that's pump one set. So I'll just repeat that with pump two for the various dosage amounts that it needs for this one, which is slightly more. But So that's a TNC one. And all I'm going to do is going to have the bottle open with the, um, the intake shoved into the bottle. And if you're having trouble with your airline, I'm just using plain old airline here for this. It can be a bit bendy and a bit curly. If that's a problem for you, just run it under some hot water and that usually straightens it out. So there we go, it's all set up. One of the things I need to watch out for is, from experience I've noticed with a lot of fertilizers, is they tend to get crusty quite easily. Not something I've noticed with the TNC ones, but I've just not been using the JBL ones quite as long as that. So I don't know if I need to do that. So I'll need to take the airlines out, give them a rinse, maybe once a month when I do my monthly maintenance jobs. 
Um, but other than that, we should be good to go. I'm going to leave them in there for a while, just putting it into pots first before I then, I'll just tip the pots in once a day, just to make sure that the, the levels are staying consistent. Uh, and once I'm happy with that, it should just be kind of leave it and forget. Um, I've set the times to dose twice a day, 12 hours apart. So it just, it, it lessens the impact of whenever I decide to do a large water change, I know that I'm not wasting any of the fertilizers. So hopefully that's useful and hopefully that gets this tank looking as good as it possibly can. Um, and I can stop pretending to be an aquascaper and actually go, look, it's nice. Anyway, if you enjoyed that kind of thing or found any of it useful, please make sure you click that subscribe button. You won't miss any future videos. As well as if you want to enter the giveaway, all you have to do is comment somewhere, hashtag AA10K and you'll be in with a chance to win. And we'll see you next time. Bye.